Want to send me a text? Cavs basketball tonight. Live from the Big Easy. Cavs Pelicans in New Orleans tonight. 8 o'clock is your tip off. So 30 minutes prior is when that pregame coverage uh, will begin. If you are watching our show today, uh, thank you to Debo Jim Jammers. <laughs> For assisting today. I forgot who helped today. That's who helped. Debo Jim Jammers. It's not so much the Debo that gets me as much as the Jim Jammers. Well, there's a little something for everybody in that one, I think. A little column A, little column B. There you go. So Cavs basketball uh, tonight. And uh, again, thank you to Debo. Debo. Of the Medina Jim Jammers, I believe. Oh. Very prominent family out there. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio... As always, thank you, because sometimes it's uh, not always easy. But I like to know where people are out there <clears throat> throughout North America listening. Matt is in Irwin, Pennsylvania. Uh, Brian listens in Collierville, Tennessee. Andy is in Monroe, North Carolina. Monroe! And um, let me go back a ways. Mary is in Wake Forest, North She's Carolina. There. I'm sorry? Midtown Manhattan. Mary is in Astoria, Queens. Am. This is an M-A-R-I on my list. <sighs> mm. <laughs> right there. Mm. <laughs> I do care. You don't. I'm trying to care. <laughs> Wait, so you are here Monday or not? Um, I am. I am. You are? Yeah. All right. I didn't know if you were going to be in bed all day. I would love to be. Oh, okay. If you're giving me permission to take Monday off, I would love that. It's you, it, you do what you you need to tell me when you're gone. Yeah, I get in. Um, I was just telling that uh, Brian that about how I just like I have I need a full I need a day to do things to get things done and have things organized and get stuff together. This morning today's already been a long day. I have a spot in Brooklyn at seven thirty tonight. Okay. Mm-hmm. But because of the way that. The trains are set up. There's you no have good to, way to get to it. No. You have to, from Astoria it's to It's like Brooklyn, going from Brunswick it, to Akron. Yeah, right. <laughs> from going from Astoria, Oh, you're going home first. I can't. Here's what I did. So to, so to go from Astoria to Brooklyn on a train is like an hour and 20 minutes because you have to go all the way top to bottom through Manhattan. There's nothing that connects Astoria and Brooklyn. So what I had to do today, because I have a 730 spot um, and then a 10 o'clock spot in Manhattan. So I drove my car from Astoria to Brooklyn, parked my car in Brooklyn, took the train from Brooklyn to work, which was still like 50 minutes, and it was delayed. So um, that sucked because I wasn't familiar with that. Uh, it's a different train system and a mm -hmm. different train station than what I'm used to taking. Um, so I parked my car in Brooklyn, took the train here. And then I'm going to take that 50-minute train ride back to Brooklyn, drive my car back into Manhattan to do my second set, and then drive my car home later tonight. And, and believe it or not, that's the easiest way to do this. That sounds, avoids two It doesn't two sound hours hard at all. I don't even know why you're talking about <laughs> it. It sounds super easy. Well, what I'm saying is it's either that or two hours and 40 minutes on the train today. That's right. not easy, too. That's terrible. That's so long to be on a train. Oh, you and just sit there with your thoughts. That's too long. An hour and 20. You can get to Columbus in the time that I'd be sitting on the yeah, train right. to get from Brooklyn to Astoria. It's like it's like eight miles or something like that from my house. Hour 21 is what I'm looking at here on the train. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Because you're right. you got to go over. Then you got to come down. And then you got to come back over into Brooklyn. Yes. Yeah. There And, I mean, I asked that. And they're like, yeah, everybody. There's no buses that run. There's there's literally no way. And they're on the same part of the like little island. It's, it's right. No, in Brooklyn. I I remember having to no do sense. stuff like that, and it's they're never gonna fix it. They're never gonna change it. They they don't assume that anybody in Astoria would ever want to go to Brooklyn or vice versa. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. They're like, if you live in those places, you're very clearly only going to Manhattan. Right. So, which well, is fine. well, everything feeds into Manhattan. Nothing really. You don't do a lot of cross borough stuff. Usually it's just the boroughs feed into Manhattan. Yeah. So I had late spots last night. I didn't get home until like 2. We had a and great then, um, show at Brothers Lounge. I had to medicine up and do that show last night, and I love that room, and it's starting to really take off too. So Good. It's, uh, it's like, you know, we don't have the, the bright lights and big stars like Mary does out there in New York City, but we're doing, our, we're doing okay out here in Cleveland, our, building um, a comedy scene. 
our bathroom fan broke. And for whatever reason, when we signed our lease, they were very adamant. Like, you have to run the fan when you take a shower. You have to oh, run the fan when you take a shower. Well, like, because of the moisture yeah. d- deteriorating tiles or something. And then it broke, and we – it's been, like, three weeks. We texted him. I was like, hey, the bathroom fan doesn't work. And then he oh, came over this morning at, like, 9 a.m., knocking on the door, 845. And I had gotten in bed at, like, 2.30, 3 in the morning. And so he – our landlord had to come in and fix the fan. Um, so it's just nice. been a long day. I'm doing that one-liner um, competition tonight. I'm mm-hmm. nervous, What's but I'm excited. What's your one-liner? I have – it's a it's a March Madness-style bracket, so I have, like, six of them. You might need up to eight, but if you go to the final four, you want you only have six. Do you want to hear them? You don't have to hear them. I would love to hear them. Do you want to hear them, Alan? It's your show. Mm-hmm. All right, hold on. I have to find them. They're written down. <laughs> do you want me to do them in order of least to most likely to win? <laughs> That's how you've already got them. I've got Least my three. to most likely well, to I win. I'll give you my three favorites yeah. that I'm like, I'm going to save. I'm going to save those for the later rounds. But you want to make sure you get one in case you want to make sure you, you got to make it, it up into the round and later rounds. Later rounds. So you got to do I it. Want, but see, I don't know the strategy here. I would go. I would. Elimination. I would use your your strongest one first. Strongest really? one first. Because yeah. you don't know what's going to hit. The final four. Well, and also, then you'll, all you have left is your weaker ones. Yeah, but so will everybody else. Unless they're doing it the opposite way. If they made it that what far, I, my guess is a lot of people are going to run out. You think? Yeah, I would go. I would go strongest. Well, let's hear them all then. The one liners well, yeah, are quick. Um, okay, I'm a stepmom, and I don't really know. <laughs> this is going to piss off so many people in our audience because they one they hate when I say stepmom, and I found out when I was putting these jokes together. One liners. All of my favorite one liners are really dark. Just do a joke. <laughs> all do the do ones do. that I've done. Do the preamble. Um, well, no, I just want it just made don't, me laugh. Yeah, don't worry about what the f- negative Nellies are going to be complaining about. No, I mean an hour. Only. I know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Just put them out of your head. No, it says, uh, <laughs> I'm a stepmom and I don't really know how to punish my stepkid. Like, can I hit her? I don't know. I do know that I can't drown her. That's a birth mom thing. Great job. Is that a one-liner? It has to be less than three sentences. Oh, I see. I got you. Okay. Yeah, because I'm like, a lot of these you have to establish, and that's like a (laughs) full bit that I cut down to three sentences. That's a good joke. Uh, My friend recently said there's not that big of a difference between a five and an eight, which is a huge lie. An eight with a man bun thinks he's a model. A five with a man bun thinks he's a samurai. No? (laughs) I'm sorry. I've I've heard these before, so I've, I like. Yeah, you're not going to laugh. Yeah. Oh, well, you don't have to tell them to me. I I didn't realize that Bill had heard them. Then why did he? Why well, I, did, I thought you wrote new ones. Why would I write new ones? She already had know. some. I thought, I keep going, though. I like Well, no, I didn't, I, I, like did, I didn't know that you had already. I thought we were all hearing them for the first time. No, I just went through and picked my favorite six one liners I'd already written. Oh, I was okay. write I... new jokes for this. What do you think I am? <laughs> trying? <laughs> She's a joke machine. I'm not yeah. a joke machine. I would, I mean, I would at least lead with something you think is really strong. Because you don't want to flop out on something because yeah, you, you were trying to, like, play round. the... You don't know right. what's going to hit. I would lead one. with that uh, step one. Right, that's a good one. joke. My mom was a hoarder, which means she kept everything except our family together. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, too. Like one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Use that second round. That's a strong one? I'd use that I think so, round, yeah. yep. That, and then the other two that I feel like are my strongest are both about my dad dying. All right. Um, before my dad died, he and I were working out together, and he was doing so well. At the beginning of it, he fit into a 6X, and by the end of it, he fit into a 4 Inch earned. <laughs> yeah, I heard that one. That's a good one. It is a good one. My favorite one. And that always kills, too, right? Always. Yeah. And this, I mean, this is my favorite joke I've ever written, and this was the one I was going to save for the final four, but now you guys are saying, like, make sure you get into oh, the final four first. Yeah. Which is, um, if anybody's seen me live, they've seen this one. My dad left my family when I was 11 years old, and he also died from COVID. We think he contracted at COVID at the grocery store, making it the second time in my life my dad has gone out for milk and never come back. It's a sweet 16 story, a Cinderella victory. Mary Santora, the one liner champion, beating all these awkward nerds that only write one liners. What is the stories, um, too? What's the payoff to winning? Uh, 150 bucks. Oh, okay. A little trophy. Yep. Where's the show at? Brooklyn Bell House. Oh, okay. So it's 64 yeah, yeah. comics. I looked at the, like, they sent us the bracket this morning. Mm-hmm. I don't know almost any of them. So it'll be cool to meet people, but there's a part. I also want to, like, impress the other comics. You know you what will, I mean? You... I don't know. I'm, like, nervous about it. <laughs> you pay for your life doing comedy. <laughs> You're all impressed, though. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, is it you and a bunch of nudniks? It's, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know any of the, I've never heard of like, I'd say out of the 64 comics, I might have recognized seven names, less than 10 names I recognized. So I don't know. I mean, they could be huge in it or like really big in the independent scene or, you know, they've only ever been in New York and never really traveled anywhere. Somebody named Jerome Seinfeld. I don't know who that is, but boy, he better bring it. I doubt he's a one liner guy. Oh, he could use that 150 bucks. (laughs) He really could. He's a billionaire. Uh, He's like, I got to win this. (laughs) You get 100. Jerry, you got to do this. Yeah. It's like proceeds go to an animal shelter. So it's um, 150 bucks for the first place. Second place gets 75, and then both third and fourth get 25. That's fun. So it's like you know they're the small payouts, but it's but it's a, a lot of fun. Show. Like that's a, yeah. that'll be a fun show, and especially having that many comics, but everybody doing just quick jokes, it should move pretty quick and be a good, uncompetable, a good time. Yeah. So, so we'll see how it goes. I have to go. I have to leave a little bit early tonight to make sure I can take my friggin' 50 minute train ride. <laughs> Brooklyn. Now, where did you leave your car, though? I parked it on the street that Bell House is on. Okay. I mean, I, I looked at all the signs, and there was no, like, They're not cleaning that day. Or, <laughs> no, no restrictions or anything like that for the time that I'd be at work. But because of the to get from the Bell House to my set at the stand is, like, <laughs> I have to take two different trains, so it's, like, 35 minutes, and I didn't want to risk missing it. Right. And I also want to drive home after my late set at the stand tonight. So... Alan, you have to run the fan when you shower because that's what powers the cameras. Oh, cool. Well, that's <gasps> interesting. I mean, make sure. You should get That's why your, your landlord then. was so adamant <laughs> that you run the fans. <laughs> Do you think they're like, why does Mary shower so much more than Sarah? <laughs> we need more Sarah in this. Come on, guys. <sighs> It's because the trains were originally built by land developers that led directly to the buildings they owned. There was no city planning involved. Uh, maybe. Someone says, yeah. Well, as I understand it, New York City has been there for a while. At least a little bit. It's pretty old. And so maybe that's got something to do with it. Did you read about Did anybody else read about the dude, the super commuter? No. No. The guy who works for the Wall Street Journal <clears throat> in New York, and they want people in the office three days a week, but he lives in Columbus, Ohio. Actually, I think I did hear about Did you read this? this? He's like, I thought that I could work the numbers out to make it work, but it's getting really hard to do because when he's there, he's sleeping with friends or he, I mean, at their apartments, <clears throat> or he's cashing in points on hotels or he's, you know, he's like, I'll stay at a Hyatt in Queens and then I'll stay somewhere else. Oh, just so he can work in New York and live in Columbus, and live in Columbus Ohio. He's like, I, you know, after the pandemic, he didn't want to move back. He had left New York to go back near his family in Columbus. And then when it was time to return, because all these places, for some reason, think people need to be in the office. You can't imagine. And there are some jobs, maybe you could make a case for it. But you can't possibly imagine why they would want a guy writing articles in the office. Three days a week. But it's a good gig, it sounds like, and he doesn't want to lose it. So he's like, I had grown accustomed to seeing my family and living in Columbus, and I didn't want to go back and start spending all my money on an apartment. So he goes back and forth from Columbus to New York. The Wall Street Journal requires me to be in the office at least three days a week, and since I commute by choice, I pay all my travel expenses. So he pays for his flights. He, so it's like him constantly trying to, like, game the points on a credit card or at a hotel or whatever. He's like, I, I do get tired of having conversations after work with people asking me where I live. I'll usually just tell them whatever hotel I'm currently in. But, yeah, because you're not, like, doing your job and flying back. You got some late night thing with some clients or something. Those points don't last long. I Well, that's how the article kind of ends. Yeah. Well, I got my United credit card in 2019 or 20 No, maybe it was 2020. 2021, I think my dad was dead. So it must have been 2021. 
And so I've had it for three years, and I have acquired like 267,000 miles. And I used it for everything. I used it for travel. I used it for groceries. Like that was my main credit card that I used for literally everything. And, I mean, you'd think 260,000 miles. That's a ton of miles, right? Well, my trips home, getting myself, Brian, and his daughter here for spring break, and then we're also going to um, – Arizona for a few days because his parents have a house out there. Yeah. My points are gone. It was, I mean, and I get it. It's three people. So I, I think it was like less than 10 flights that took up all of those miles. So if that guy is doing, and it took me three years right, to get that up to 260,000 and then they're gone in 10 flights. Yeah. He said in the end, my math didn't work. I blew my budget by 15% and drained my miles balance. Yeah. And I, well, because then I was like, okay, well, I also have an Amex travel card, but I wasn't using it as much. And I only had like, 40,000 points on there, and that was one flight. Right. So it's like, yeah, those things, it takes you forever to build them up. And then they'll be like, flash sale, round trip to Miami, only 80,000 miles. And you're like, what the hell do you mean? (laughs) Yeah, he said, I set my alarm in Columbus for 4.15 a.m., and I get to the airport for a 6 o'clock flight. If everything goes according to plan, I make it door-to-door in three hours. But if there are delays, which are not infrequent, obviously, he has to scramble to rebook on other flights. Oh, God. you got to really want to stay. I just don't understand why the Wall Street Journal's like, yeah, we'd like you writers in the office three days a week. And you know they don't care. They're like, you're doing this on your own. Right. We're not asking you to do this. That's pretty wild. I but, you know, he's a single dude. He's gay. But it's still, like, crazy. it's a lot of running around. He was used to seeing his, oh, like, his extended family? Yeah, his family, like, his sister and parents oh, live in yeah. Columbus, yeah. No, a married guy could never do this. I mean, he could. Ever do this. Well, he wouldn't be married for long. There's people who do that. There are, yeah. But, I mean, this guy just didn't want to move back to New York. So he's I like, I mean, friend. if this was a married guy and he was pulling this you know, every week to go back and forth to New York. I have a friend that does this actually, that he's a professor at uh, Queens College. And he lives See, here, and he'll go there, teach his classes, and then come back on the weekends. I have a friend whose parents have been married like 40 years, and a couple years ago the mom just moved to New Orleans. They're still married. They're still in love. She just didn't want to live in Ohio anymore. And he did, and she was like, all right, well, I'm moving. I'll see you when I see you. Yeah, that ain't a good sign. No, I mean, if you go, I mean, when they're I, like, oh, honestly, we're still in love, it's like, well, not real. I mean, I think that if you've been with someone for that long and you're like, hey, come visit me. And I think he goes down there for like a few months at a time and she'll come home for holidays and things like that. So they still understand like a long distance relationship. You've right. been with someone for 40 years. Well, that's what I'm saying. You've been married for 40 anywhere. years. You're essentially roommates anyway. I mean, you're kind of, you're like companions. You're not, you know, only somebody who's like that kind of detached from the whole structure of it can go, well, I'm going to move to New Orleans. And the other guy goes, I'm not going. I think it was his job. Well, that's part of it. Sure. But either way. I think there would have been some compromise. Why New Orleans? I don't know. I might even have that wrong. I think it's New Orleans. But um, somewhere in the South. Right. What's it called? The lean? Yeah, the leans. I'm the sorry. leans. Yeah. yeah. The leans. I'm moving to the leans, and there's nothing you can do to stop me, honey. I'll see you when I see you. How long have they been doing that? You've always put the leans over me. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. How long have they been doing that? I think like two years. Two years. Two or three years. Yeah, because at that point, whatever happens, happens. Right? After 40 years, you just go, okay. I was going to share retirement years. Like You get to spend them how you want them. And I think that's what he plans on doing, is that after he's retired, they'll move there. But why wouldn't they wait until, if he's within. She didn't want to. She probably is like, I'm tired of of shoveling this this damn driveway. Like, it's it's a foot of snow. I'm cold. My bones are brittle. Moving to New Orleans. Yeah, I want to drown in a hurricane. I don't want to shovel the, the, I don't want to shovel the driveway. Huh? That's that, the lower level. You could the there's parts of New Orleans that aren't flooded or didn't really get hit by the No, flood. but the whole city's a bowl. I mean, I, I can I understand why people might be over shoveling snow, but that's a whole different situation down there. Well anyway, I, whatever makes it work for them, but I was gonna say everybody so, has something. I know it's not exactly the same, but Brian's parents bought a house in Arizona in Goodyear and um they go usually from like end of December until end of April, uh, every year that they've had it. And um 
this past year, his dad went out again for a couple months because they have it. His dad's retired, but his stepmom isn't. So there's, like, where his dad's like, all right, well, I'm going to go out to the house in Arizona for six weeks. And it's like, yeah, you bought the house. Go live in it for a while. And, you know, they stay apart. They've been together for however many years, and two months apart is nothing. I guess. Like, it's nice to have a little break. Why? I think why? So. Did, I mean, why did they buy the place? To eventually retire to. He was already retired, and she was retiring in a few years. I see. But in the meantime, it's like you have a whole ass house. Go yeah. live in it for a while. You got your mistress there, too. That's <laughs> nice. That's fun. <laughs> well, that's where the whole ass house comes in. Yeah. That's why he calls it that. I got a whole ass house out here. <laughs> I'm tired of you. I'm going to the ass house with <laughs> Becky for Don't, six weeks. I highly doubt that's what's going Becky on. Becky with the good hair. Mm, and, and ass. Great ass. I'm going to take a break. Want to get the last word in? Shoot me a text, 35192, and we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox Show. On iHeartRadio. Our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards.